Welcome to Accountable, where your business is our business. Hosted by David R. Peters. Today's guest is Greg Hardy. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Accountable, the podcast for CFOs by a CFO. My name's Dave. Welcome to our show this week. One of the things that I have been hearing a lot lately is I think a lot of companies are struggling with brand identity and connectivity during the pandemic. In other words, how do we maintain a connection with the key people that really make our business run? Would be that, you know, stakeholders, shareholders, customers, clients, those types of people. How do we maintain a relationship with them during the pandemic? When we can't see them, when we can't sort of interact with them, at least not easily, as easily as it was, when we can't see them face to face, what do we do? How do we maintain that connectiveness? And I think that this problem in particular has been difficult for organizations, for companies that really sell experience. Uh, Restaurants uh, might be an example, or even professional organizations. Uh, So the CPA societies and, and groups like that, that really thrive on the live experience with people sort of interacting face to face. How do you maintain that connectiveness that you need to have to be successful in a world where people aren't really venturing out much? My guest this week on Accountable is Greg Hardy. Greg is the content strategist for the South Carolina Association of CPAs. And uh, he is someone who has encountered this problem and had to face this problem throughout uh, the last you know year or so, trying to figure out how do we maintain connectiveness with uh, the membership in their case, you know, the members. And I think that what is uh, interesting here is he talks a lot about not just sort of, uh, you know, kind of little tidbits here and there, you know, tricks uh, as the case may be, but he really digs into what does the strategy have to be if you're going to sort of be top of mind to your clients in a time when they can't see you. So I think that uh, Greg is a great guy to talk to about this because uh, he's been somebody who's had to navigate these waters, especially more recently. And I think you can take a lot of what he says and apply it to a lot of different industries. So uh, I think that uh, Greg's a great guy. He's uh, he's uh, done a lot uh, for SCAPA, especially uh, over uh, over this time uh, when uh, we were not having as many uh, in-person events. And so uh, he's a great guy to talk to, a lot of energy and uh, somebody who is uh, brutally honest about uh, some of the challenges and uh, some of the opportunities uh, that really come up uh, during a time when uh, live events just aren't happening. So anyway, enjoy my conversation this week with Greg Hardy. This week on Accountable, my guest, Greg Hardy. Greg, thank you so much for being on our show uh, this week. It's a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Been looking forward to it. Yeah, um, I am too, uh, because I think that uh, you have some unique perspective on a subject that uh, I think a lot of companies, a lot of organizations, a lot of nonprofits, uh, you know, kind of regardless of the sector, a lot of folks are curious about. And that is, is, you know, especially over the past year, this idea of, uh, you know, customer engagement, member engagement, keeping stakeholders uh, aware of your organization, I think has really been a challenge. Um, and so, I guess I would ask, uh, you know, what have been some of the opportunities, some of the challenges that you've seen in your work uh, in terms of uh, member engagement in light of the fact that we can't really have live events right now? That's so true. And um, especially the fact that, um, you know, we have to let people know that we're still here for them. That was the main thing, you know, whether, uh, you know, 
here at South Carolina Association of CPAs. Uh, we're a nonprofit membership association. We have 4,000 members from across the state. And um, uh, part of what we offer is, you know, both the education, but also uh, the social connectivity and networking and, and events that we do. Um, twice a year, we have uh, two day big annual conferences. You've been a speaker, Adam. Um, and we hold those on third. We'll, we hold one in the spring and one in the fall. They happen on Thursdays and Fridays. Well, we always make sure to have on that Thursday an entertainment night. So there's uh, could be 500 people attending these conventions. And so we tell them that included you know, in the package is uh, you get this free events where, you know, they're themed and we have fun stuff. Um, they could be things like a dunk tank for the CEO. And uh, right before the shutdown, we plan like a big pinata party and things like the things that create memories and get people involved because um, when we advertise the in-person events that we have, we emphasize that, um, you know, it's, it's not just about the event and the networking. We're creating lifelong friendships and memories. And that's what, you know, part of what people come to expect and, and, and what happens. So um, through the past year, our, our number one mission has been just to let people know we're still here for them. You know, yes, we're pivoting to online right. and live stream events, but, you know, we have the speakers who are going to speak on the topics that you need. And uh, part of that is listening to what people need. Um, you know, even though we're apart, you know, we're still open, we're still listening. And so uh, the courses that we need, and then as things went along, um, we we're able to, uh, to offer things, you know, more a little bit on the fun side to, to let people know that, you know, we're, we're, we're still here for you and we'll definitely be here, you know, whatever comes next as things open up. Yeah, so I I want to I want to touch on a couple of things uh, that you said in there because I think I, I think you said some interesting things. The first thing is is that you know while we're talking about this from a uh, you know a uh, a professional organization perspective today, the fact is is that a lot of businesses they sell the experience. And, and that's the term that you used is that, you know, part of the reason why people go to South Carolina Association of CPAs events, SCAPA events, is for that experience. And it would seem to me that, uh, you know, I mean, because, uh, you know, that, that that strategy kind of has to change um, in that, uh, you know, that you, you can't have quite the same experience online. Is I mean, is that fair to say? Absolutely. And also, uh, you know, build into the fact that with all the deadlines moving around last year, um, CPAs, they were working, you know, they didn't really have yeah. time to, to get their heads up. Um, so uh, just to be able to uh, keep the communication channels open, you know, to what they're looking for when they do get a moment to breathe, you know, that was um, part of what we were on the lookout for and what we wanted to offer. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, you know, I mean, especially with the tax deadline moving from uh, April fifteenth to Ju to July fifteenth, a lot of people just kind of had their heads down. Um, it, I mean, if you were a, a in the accounting profession, um, you know, certainly you kind of had your head down. But it wasn't just tax CPAs either, by the way, folks. I mean, uh, you know, so those of you that are are listening, uh, you know, folks that were working in industry, I think, uh, you know, especially you know March, April, May, you know, kind of that time frame, there was a lot of uncertainty out there. There was a lot of people that were really just kind of struggling to figure out like what tomorrow was. <laughs> I think I, I, I think more than anything else. Um, so so you, I mean you you talked about how you know part of the strategy was it, it, it was trying to make sure that people know that you're there. How do you do that? How how do you let people know that you're there when they can't see you? Well. Um, we have our communication channels of our weekly electronic newsletter that comes out every Thursday. So 930 in their inbox, you know, whether they have you know, time for it or not, they know, okay, 930 Thursday morning, um, we're going to get a message from SCAPA. Um, we occasionally have email blasts of, of things that we're doing. Um, we still kept pu publishing a printed quarterly magazine. Uh, so whether you're working from home or your office, um, you know, you, it could get routed to where you are, that there is still that physical print magazine that, you know, just to show people that, you know, we're still, our doors are still open, you know, we're still at our desks, wherever those desks may be, and that we're working with that. And so while we did, you know, dabble a little bit in trying to offer, you know, virtual social happy hours, which I'm sure everyone did, a lot of what our messaging turned to was offering um, volunteer opportunities. 
well, um, ways to, to volunteer. And you know, as a membership association, that's so vital to what we do to make sure to get members involved for you know board of directors and chapter officers and um, other uh, other initiatives. So uh, so it wasn't so much an active you know pushing out messaging. It was more a messaging of when you're ready, tell us what you'd like to do. What are your interests? How much time you can devote? Um, what what you have for, free you know to, to open? So we create a form on our website where people can describe what they wanted to do, and you know we can work with them in that way when they're ready to talk to us. Yeah, so I, I mean, I think uh, I, that that's that's kind of an interesting idea. So you know, instead of trying to just sort of offer something, you ask people what they want. Uh, did membership, uh, you know, respond pretty favorably to that? I mean, uh, was that something that they kind of jumped on? Well, we we had things to offer them when, when they were ready, such as you know, uh, literally a membership engagement committee that they can join of of finding out ways to get people involved, and you know, a, a lot of that involves. Um, when you have a virtual uh, social happy hour or, or things like that, or have like a virtual bingo night, you know, have gift cards to give out, have prizes to give out, make people excited that they got, you know, something, you know, from that. And so, um, you know, one of our chapters, they just had their second edition of a virtual bingo night and they give out some pretty cool stuff like Apple watches and, <laughs> and the yeah. Nintendo Twitch. And um, I think I saw an Instapot on the table at one point. So, um, so to make it exciting for people to come in, and you know you get thirty people uh, to, to log in, and it's something that they remember, and they can talk about, and to let them know that you know SCAP is still there for them. So, uh, so, and you're you are aren't just experiencing uh, you know some of these challenges uh, in I mean you experience it in your work with uh, SCAPA, but uh, some of the other stuff that you do. You've you've also sort of struggled with the same problem of trying to, you know, maintain engagement, maintain, uh, you know, this connection, uh, you know, probably for for lack of a better word, this connection with the folks that really make the organization run. Um, so, I mean, have some of the uh, in some of the other work that you've done, have you experienced similar challenges, or are they are they the same? And what has some of the strategy been for for you know in some of your other work? Uh, well, I can tell you, um, you know, what one strategy that you can use um, in the endless Groundhog Day of just, you know, what, what day is it, what time? Um, stay connected to seasonal things. Um, last year, I know, I know a lot of state societies might have a month of service, and which for us is always in October. And so we decided that we were going to make an active push to members to let them know. Um, we have things, you know, set up for you that don't require going outside. You know, in South Carolina, like a typical month of service project might be a beach sweep or, you know, a street clean. Um, so, you know, to be open and strategic with people who are stalled to do it. There were still uh, CPA firms that went out and found, um, uh, you know, a, a nonprofit that they believed in and did like landscaping work and outside things that could be done outdoors and safely in a park, but you're still there. People, you know, still see your CPA firm shirt. And, um, uh, but we also uh, made the main initiative just to be to donate money to food banks, which was the easy, it folded in so easily that, you know, you, you can still have the canned food drive if you want, but, um, in all honesty, a lot of these food banks, it just works best when you give them the money and you know resources to uh, thing to, to acquire the things that are needed in those communities, so that you know people knew that they were definitely helping. Um, you know, in a time in the past year when people really needed that help, uh, so that was a really fun way to uh, definitely and seasonally let people know. Hey, remember October month of service is still a thing. We're still going to go through with it. We did it last year. We're going to do it next year, and you know, in this situation, we're doing it now. So uh, we hope you can join in. So I, I I think what I hear you saying is 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 trying to take pieces of that connectiveness. Uh, so we I mean we talked about T-shirts and uh, you know things like that that sort of like you know that go along with sort of being uh, that identify with certain times of the year, with uh, certain places, certain uh, companies, certain organizations, and sort of trying to maintain connectiveness through that. I mean, is that is that right? Absolutely right. To, uh, to make things as seamless as possible, to make people realize that, you know, we're, things are different now, but we can still, you know, try to give a little flavor of it, um, of things that are familiar. 
One of the things uh, I, I saw recently uh, was there was a, um, a an uh, uh, an elderly woman, and I, I don't I, I don't remember where she she was, but uh, uh, she was attending uh, her place of worship um, o- online, and she continued to dress up uh, as if uh, she was going to uh, uh, to her normal place of worship uh, every single week, and so um, and they asked her about. I just saw um, that headline last night. I yeah, know what you're talking about. yeah, no, and it was uh, it was just incredible. I mean, because uh, you know, um, I, I think uh, a lot of us, uh, you know, we look at like online meetings and we say, hey, you know. Blue Jeans Day, <laughs> you know, and uh, and uh, you know she, uh, she, you know she was she was trying to maintain that experience. I, I think is kind of what I took away from that, and I and I think that's kind of what you're saying here. It's about maintaining that experience in the place that you're in. Right, exactly, and a part of that is sharing people's success stories and the things that they're doing. And you know, there's still you know there's still uh, you know magazines and uh, periodicals that still give you know the best. CPA firms of the year. And, you know, we had um, a firm that, you know, was honored with one of those awards. So we definitely made sure people you know, knew about that, that um, people are still, you know, connected in that way and that they're still, you know, turning out good work. Um, one of our uh, features that we always have in our quarterly magazine is just a, a, a one page little profile of how I work. So it's just a quick Q&A of, uh, you know, what devices do you use? What advice, you know, what are you binge watching right now? And um, during the turnaround time last year of um, just as things were shutting down, um, it was fortunate enough. I had a couple of those um, that were banked up from you know, one of our larger firms and we had interviewed some of their younger members. And so I got back in touch with them and said, hey, I've got your, you know, we, you filled out these how I worked, you know, pre shutdown. Well, let's do a, comp- can, you, can you go through another round of that and we'll print it like as a compare and contrast. And uh, so, th- so that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it came out really well. I, I think, uh, I, yeah, absolutely. So that's that's kind of an interesting uh, idea too. I, I know um, uh, in uh, a previous episode of Accountable, we uh, we talked to a uh, college professor and uh, um, and uh, she was she was talking about some of those things too, where uh, people were comparing sort of how they worked, you know, um, it, during the pandemic when they're working at home versus you know kind of where they would be, you know, kind of at other points. Um, l- let me ask you this. So, th- I mean, I, I don't think that I'm reaching here when I say that, you know, a lot of times when we talk about sort of online gatherings and things like that, there's a bit of there's a bit of negativity there. There seems to me to be a bit of negativity where people are like, it's it's not the same. It's not the um, uh, you know, it's it's not going to be the same experience. And therefore, you know, they're automatically kind of feeling, um, you know, sort of sort of negative towards it. It's not the same. It's not going to be the same. And we're kind of kidding ourselves if we think that it's going to be the same. Um, I, is there anything that we can do to sort of combat that feeling? Is it just a matter of, you know, uh, you know, be a negative for the sake of being negative? <laughs> or is it I mean, or is it I mean, or is there something more to it? Well, the, uh, the the number one thing is flexibility. To be flexible and, and to adjust on the fly. And if one thing didn't work next time, well, don't do it again. <laughs> Try something else for that. Um, right. And so, just always, you know, work with your your strengths of whatever situation that you're in. If it's just a small gathering, well, that's an intimate gathering. You get to be a little more personal sometimes, as opposed to a hundred, you know, boxes on the screen. You know, well, here's you know nine or ten of us. You know, let's talk about what we're, we're thinking of. And, and that gives people a chance, you know, to be heard, and um, just be open to the creativity of it all. Um, we had a, a food development group meeting recently with other state societies uh, that I moderated, and I definitely wanted to open the floor of um, what are some things you've tried. You know, here at Scapa, we did virtual bingo, and one of the fun things you can do with that it doesn't just have to be, you know, B twenty four, you know, G nineteen, you know. They have ways with these online things that you can personalize them. They can be, you know, Star Wars bingos or Harry Potter bingos or even, you know, make your own. So you can make, you know, in a, you know, a CPA, you know, bingo card, you know, what that would look like <laughs> possibly. Uh, but there are so many great and creative ideas that I heard from other state societies. Um, Louisiana, I believe, um, they had... Um, as part of like virtual relaxation sessions, um, like yoga session, like online yoga sessions, you know, 
might not be the first, wasn't, wouldn't be the first thing I would have thought of to do it, but um, that was something that they had uh, success with. Um, and a twist you can have on a virtual social happy hour is um, you can bring in a professional bartender to do a mixology um, and just, you know, that one state society, they, they did mocktails, you know, non-alcoholic cocktails, but, you know, had different okay. ingredients. So, um, again, just, you know, look out there and, um, you know, there's uh, a lot of resources out there to help you because so many uh, event planners, you know, jumped into the same boat as well that, that they couldn't have in-person meetings. So, um, you know, maybe if they did more entertainment things, they looked into creating, okay, let's do entertainment as, you know, corporate events, as, you know, um, corporate learning experiences. Uh, so there are definitely organizations that are out there um, doing that. Well, and I, th I think what I hear you saying, uh, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, is, is that, um, well, I mean, there may be some things that we can't quite replicate online, because I think that that's immediately where people jump to. I mean, if I'm completely honest, I think that that's what people are looking for. They're saying they're comparing, you know, the same thing and they're saying, well, it's not like the live. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, probably. But I think what I hear you saying is, is that there's probably some opportunities there if we're willing to sort of think creatively about it. And, and some of the things, some maybe things that used to be barriers may not necess necessarily be barriers online. Right. Uh, you know, in you know, ordinary times, you, you know, you want to get out of your house just to see, you know, something new and, and, and just for the change of scenery. So when you're doing an online event, make sure it's something that they can't do in their home. <laughs> that is something that they're not seeing, yeah. you, know, um, you know, on Netflix or anywhere else that they're, they're looking. That it's something um, unique. Like there are online magic shows out there. There are online comedy clubs that do, you know, corporate events. Um, so, you know, there, it's... There's not a lot of limits to what's out there, what you can do when you're creative. Yeah, I think that uh, I, I uh, had a, a friend of mine, I was having coffee with a friend of mine, and uh, one of the things that he mentioned was, is he said that uh, he had kept in better contact during the pandemic with uh, his friends that were across the country, uh, as opposed to, uh, you know, kind of during normal times, uh, you know, because he was saying that, uh, you know, he's like, what's the difference if, you know, somebody's next door versus across the country, you know, I mean, uh, you know, really, um, you know, I mean, either way, you're sort of meeting people over the internet uh, anyway. So, <laughs> you know, so. You know, uh, yeah, you as, know. Long, as long as you keep the time difference in mind. Right. <laughs> you're right. nine o'clock. How you doing? You know, right there. Six, six a.m. How you doing? You know, or, you know. Yeah. Um, it, let, let me ask you this. So, I mean, uh, w w is there a way, um, you know, so we I mean, we've. Uh, we keep talking about kind of, and, and even during this conversation, you've heard me say, um, you know, normal time versus pandemic time. Um, and we keep, to, I, and I, I don't like the term new normal because that just seems very buzzwordy to me. But, but I mean, what happens if things really don't go back? I mean, you know, people have talked about We'll just wait until things return to normal. And I think that there's sort of this image in our brain that, you know, that one day we're all just going to emerge <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it's all going to be the same. Like, like it's a daylight savings time weekend, you know, okay, everybody set your clock. Right. Okay. Everybody agree. This is over, you know, or that, you know, yeah, that's, it's not going to be like yeah. daylight savings time weekend. Yeah. Well, I mean, so what happens if things don't go back? I mean, I, I mean, I, I would assume that companies have have to change strategy, right? I mean, uh, if if they haven't already, um, maybe not change, but just keep adjusting until, until you just find you know that that spot where you know you're giving you know, your members or employees you know what they need to feel appreciated, or and that they're making connections. Yeah, I, I think that that's I, I think that that's true. Um, let's let's talk about uh, some of the other things that uh, you're uh, that you're working on because I know that uh, you know you've um, uh, been doing a lot here with like uh, uh, creating video uh, content and uh, some of the things that uh, some of the other things that you're doing. I believe uh, you told me that uh, you are moderating a panel. Is that correct at uh, uh, Interchange? Um, uh, for those of uh, our listeners who are not familiar with Interchange, you want to want to tell people maybe a little bit about that. Sure, you bet. Uh, what Interchange is, 
is um, an annual conference where um, all the various state societies uh, can get together uh, for a couple of days and just share best practices and ideas and initiatives and what's on the horizon. And it's a great way to, to share ideas. So um, two years ago in Dallas, for example, I moderated uh, a, uh, a panel on podcasting. And uh, to do that, I got uh, uh, three people from different, you know, size societies. One that had, you know, the resources to do anything, uh, to more middle of the road, to just, uh, you know, bare bones. Like, look, it's just our COO, and you know, just having interviews. You can do all three. You know, you, you know, just as long as you put the time, you know, commitment and the effort into it. Uh, because that's the thing. Once you start something, you really need to keep it going um, uh, for people to keep coming back. Um, the, like a podcast, for instance, like I know, like one of the uh, right. strategies when you start one is have five or six in the bank so that, you know, when people find it for the first time, they have, you know, a couple of options uh, to choose from. So um, uh, the one that we're doing this time uh, for, you know, for the second year in a row, interchange is going to be virtual. Um, they keep promising us we'll go to New Orleans and I'll believe them eventually. <laughs> so that that's definitely on the top of, you know, my when things open up again list is interchange New Orleans. But um, uh, but yeah, uh, video uh, content that you do. Um, I know definitely uh, we've kept up a s steady stream here of um, weekly tax podcasts. Um, you know, we make use of Melissa's um, A and A podcast, and just that they're always up there, always updated. People can come back um, that they know what the topics are. And uh, there, yeah, there could be a lot of variety. Like some videos might get nine hits, uh, some will get three hundred. Um, you just got to keep right. you know, going out there. You can't chase the numbers per se of oh, what people are going to do. Like this is a case where you just have to just you know put stuff out there, let them know you know that you're dedicated to getting this information out there, and uh, and that keeps people coming back. You know, for when they do find something that they need. Well, and I, I and I think that uh, that's an important point here. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I think a lot of companies uh, are struggling with is, you know, again, is is maintaining uh, connectivity. And they've they've tried to go to sort of online uh, methods of maintaining connectivity. And I think sometimes I think the tendency is to sort of give them up too quickly because they don't sort of find the magic bullet. Uh, you know, it's like, um, you know, if it if it uh, doesn't sort of land right away, if I if I put out some videos and it doesn't, you know, net me, you know, uh, you know, X number of hits that, you know, that that must not be an effective method of, you know, of reaching people. And I think what I what I heard you say that I think is is kind of interesting is sticking with stuff, <laughs> you know, uh, consistency. And because uh, it's not necessarily going to be kind of the first first shot that's that's really going to that's really going to do something and really going to be a difference maker. Right. And by continually um, uh, posting things and uh, pushing content out there, uh, not only do you let people know that you're still there, that you're you're still working and you know trying to get message. Hopefully, in that process, as you go along, you get better at sending out the messages that you want to send out. That just through you know you're you're going to be better on your 25th podcast than your second podcast. Sure, sure, and I and I think that that's uh, that that's important. Um, it, I've also found too, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of companies. It it almost feels like they're kind of forcing online content. I think sometimes too, where it's just like you can kind of tell that this just isn't really something that they're kind of overly committed to. And I think sometimes I think that that can come off uh, as looking, I don't know, bl uh, bland. I don't know if that's uh, if uh, that's the right word. Um, well, my advice for that is it definitely starts with a plan of what message right. you're trying to send out and you know, plan in advance. So what is you know our fifth or 10th, 15th edition you know, going to look like? What are we going to talk about? And you know, everyone's going to be a subject matter expert on something. So just what is that? What can you tell people that they're not getting um, anywhere else? And um, so that becomes you know, part of the, like here at SCAPA, part of our value message is you know, we're giving you South Carolina information that you can't get anywhere else. Uh, sure. So just know know your market, know your audience, and what can you give people that they can't get anywhere else, and and go and go from start from there. And yeah, and I think and I think uh, probably uh, you know gen, uh, genuine, uh, you know the kind of this genuine feeling. I mean, if it, if it's genuine, it's gonna it's gonna come across uh, no matter what the media is, you know. But uh, but if it's uh, you know kind of 
uh, fakey and it seems like something that we should do that, uh, you know, that that usually kind of lands poorly. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll at least throw my experience out there uh, with that one. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so. I'll, I'll, authenticity is the key and um, yeah. that people have to feel it. And so, you know, be open to um, comments and feedback about, you know, how your message is being received. What, is there any sort of, uh, I don't know, tips and tricks uh, that uh, that you've seen, things that have been maybe effective or maybe not effective uh, when it comes to sort of connecting with people, um, whether that be, you know, customers or stakeholders or, uh, you know, vendors, um, uh, uh, membership, uh, you know, online, um, any sort of tips and tricks or, or things that you think works and maybe things that don't? Well, uh, I would say uh, the number one key is definitely be upfront about what you're offering uh, in your session or uh, what, what this is going to look like. Um, let people know what they're coming for, what they're going to get. Um, if it's an education experience, let them know what specific knowledge it's going to be. If it's a social or networking event, you know, that's when the time comes to bust out the, the gift cards. You know, whether they're um, uh, people who've pre-registered in advance you know, uh, send them some DoorDash um, gift certificates. That way, you know, you can turn it into, you, you've got that covered as something they don't have to worry about from wherever they're located. Or if, you know, the prizes are a gift card, you know, maybe don't go the, you know, e-gift card, you know, physically ma mail to them, you know, in the mail so that, you know, they have something concrete of, oh, this is, you know, it's just a Visa or Amazon gift card, but, you know, here it is, you know, right now that, you know, you've got that connection. Yeah, I think I think all of those ideas are, are great ideas. I uh, I think uh, you know again. I think it's uh, you know a lot of this uh, you know struggle I, I, for connectivity. I think uh, one thing that people forget is that we're all kind of struggling to uh, you know connect. And so uh, you know anytime that you can do something for somebody, I think that makes things a little bit more personal. You know, be it uh, you know buy them lunch, uh, you know, or something like that through uh, you know through uh, uh, you know some sort of delivery service or something like that. I think uh, you know. Know, that those types of personal touches I think can still go a long way and beginning uh, and middle and end you know let them know that you appreciate that you're here thank you for coming it's great to see you again even if it's just you know like this um, uh, and then you know after, have something for them to walk away with you know after work or something but uh, yeah. So, uh, so folks, I think the bottom line here is, and the, and what we're really trying to get at is, is that uh, you know that uh, really your it, it's it's creativity and just kind of genuineness that you know can really sort of drive uh, connectivity. Um, you know, that's what drives you being connected to your customers, to your clients, uh, to your stakeholders uh, in your organization, no matter what type of organization that is. And, uh, you know, really, it's it's that it's uh, it's that that really drives connectivity. It's not necessarily uh, the ability to have live events. And so, uh, you know, so there are ways to get around it um, if we're willing to uh, to think, um, uh, you know, kind of outside, I, I guess, outside of the box is sort of the buzzwordy way of saying it. But but uh, just away from kind of the way that we normally think. Just be nimble and flexible, um, you know, listen with authenticity. Um, I think, you know, like you mentioned before, it was about 10 minutes into the shutdown when we all got sick of those, you know, new normal messaging or in these yeah. you know, troubled times, you know, so don't use that language, you know, look, look for ways um, to talk in the same language, whether it's your, your members, your clients, and even, you know, your colleagues, you know, always, you know, just when you're interacting, you know, even, you know, with peers, you know, that's uh, just a great way to always be practicing and always trying to figure out, oh, okay, it's, it's better when I have a lighted background like this or the, the bookcase or, you know, let, let people know the things like that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I, Greg, I feel like we're barely scratching the surface here, but uh, um, it, what, if uh, people would like to get a hold of you um, to talk to you more, maybe about, uh, you know, some of the stuff that uh, the uh, South Carolina Association of CPAs is doing or just uh, uh, things that things that you're up to, um, how, how would uh, be best uh, for them to get a hold of you? Uh, well, my uh, email here at SCAPA is ghardy, G-H-A-R-D-Y, at scapa.org, S-C-A-C-P-A dot org. Um, I'm on LinkedIn under Gregory Hardy. Uh, there's, if, if you're a football fan or UFC fighter, you know there's other Greg Hardys running around. But, you know, the, the, the South Carolina Greg Hardy is Gregory Hardy. Um, I'll be there for LinkedIn uh, for that. And, you know, we're at www.scapa.org. Um, for uh, if, if you want to see how we're presenting things, uh, the volunteer forms, if you want to get an idea of our volunteers page, um, 
that the, the form that we give to people of what are your interests? What, you know, how much time do you have available for that? You know, you know, what are you looking for in return out of that? That way it's a mutually you know, beneficial you know, arrangement when you're asking for volunteers. Well, all of that sounds great. Well, Greg, um, like I said, I feel like we're barely scratching the surface here, but uh, I think that we've thrown out uh, at least some things for our listeners to chew on. And uh, and I think that, uh, you know, I think that that's great. And uh, hopefully they can, uh, you know, maybe take some of those things and, uh, you know, help uh, help their organizations, help their companies be successful. So thank you so much uh, for being on Accountable. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. I think this was great. It was a lot of fun. No, thanks for the invitation, David. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Accountable. Be sure to subscribe for more interviews and insights from today's business leaders. David Peters is a registered representative offering securities through Satera Advisor Networks, LLC, member FINRA SIPC. Advisory services offered through Carroll Financial Associates, a registered investment advisor. Peters Tax Preparation, David Peters Financial, Carroll Financial, and Satera Advisor Networks are not affiliated. He is located at 1657 West Broad Street, Unit 5, Richmond, Virginia, 23220, and can be reached at 804-332-1373. The views depicted in this material are for information purposes only and not necessarily those of Satera. They should not be considered specific advice or recommendations for any individual.